a conversation we were having um, uh, a couple of nights ago, it seems, it seems an age ago now, uh, but in terms of AMSAT groups worldwide, um, there, there are many uh, from the largest, which is no doubt AMSAT, NA or AMSAT, uh, to some of the smallest, and uh, which are probably only two or three people who are sort of fanatically, passionately interested um, and start an AMSAT group, which is fine. The difficulty we sometimes have, um, sort of internationally, is how do we verify that those two or three people uh, in any particular country actually can speak with some authority or are recognised within their country, within their country as being the satellite experts or friends. So it was really just a question of whether we could work out a way of verifying the um, uh, veracity of any particular group. What we were thinking of doing was to um, suggest that or, although there is a, a, a list of all the different um, uh, AMSAT groups around the world, uh, there's no sort of central sort of verification for, for them. But what does exist within the IARU field frame is that all national societies are recognized or not by IARU um, as the national society representing amateur radio in that country. And uh, probably what we could do is to get the, each national society to confirm that a particular AMSAT in a particular country is the right one. Now, that leads us to make an AMSAT organization only a valid AMSAT <coughs> organization if the IARU member society in that country says so. So it's putting us another tier into the organization worldwide, because there is no AMSAT international, there's no international body, and I don't think uh, there's probably much need for that. But, so this is a sort of proposal that we, we were kicking around. Um, the upside would be that it gives a much clearer view as to what is a real AMSAT group in a particular country. In some countries, um, there are sort of two or three different ones. Uh, and that makes it quite difficult if you're... Well, I think it, we'll make that suggestion and do the AC that, uh, that we list that particular, uh, make that listing available. Uh, but what we do is, is we will ask every uh, national society to, uh, to confirm whether an AMSET is an AMSET. But, you know, it may not necessarily be acceptable. I don't know what the feeling is here about that. But at the moment, you don't know. I mean, some countries have like three AMSATs, I, I won't mention the ones, but every time we get a satellite um, uh, coordination request, um, it says we are the first satellite bull in the country. Meantime, we've already lost, we have already coordinated three other satellite groups in that same same country, and they all claim to be the new AMSAT. So, you know, it, it has become a problem. I think one needs to try and at least uh, tie the AMSATs together. And also, if you do that, then you also maybe can develop within the IEU list, a, a mailing list of AMSAT organizations and who they are, and make that available to, um, to everybody that, that wants to disseminate information about a new project or a new satellite. So what's the feeling? Barry? Hans, my understanding is, is that we already have a, a list of international AMSAT organizations that basically AMSAT NA maintains. The challenge we have is exactly what Graham has suggested, which is when you get these requests, you have, we have no way to verify the veracity of these groups, and there are countries that have competing groups. So am I hearing really two different issues here? One issue involves how does one recognize an AMSAT organization, but B, from an IARU perspective, since the process is supposed to have that the satellite builder go to their AMSAT organization to help deal with the issues of frequency coordination, that is where your interest is, is that correct? That's correct, yeah. So um, I can understand the IARU's interest in this question. Um, I would like to suggest that, at least from an AMSAT North America perspective, that we do sort of go to the board and say, this is how we think we ought to approach it, <coughs> but let the AMSAT organization sort of confirm from themselves that they would like to endorse the idea of having the IARU recognized organizations be the, the quote, clearinghouse. 
we have a mailing list uh, of the of, well of, of the uh, email list of the uh, satellite organizations or the AMSAT organizations. So it would be easy if we, we have some sort of um, proposal here that we actually, as you suggest, we submit that to everybody and say, you know, please comment how you feel about it. But the only way we can really verify it is to go and say, well, ask your local body, uh, IOU membership organization to verify uh, that you are the legitimate MZ organization in your country. But that may not necessarily be acceptable, of course, to everybody. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I don't think that is acceptable, actually. I don't think we get acceptance on that generally. But why do we have to have one per country? And why does it have to be a country? Why could you not have several countries coming together, say the Benelux countries or something, and having one AMSAT that's theirs, or several African countries or something like that, <coughs> to then give them the strength of numbers? Sure. Uh, and you'd be precluding that if you have to have one per country. It might only be one member in some of the countries. Sometimes, yeah. Right, I'm just following up on that and stealing one line out of the talk we'll be seeing later. This hobby is the only hobby in the world governed by UN Treaty as uh, promulgated by the uh, ITU, especially when it comes to satellite violence. So uh, the time is coming with the proliferation of CubeSats where there's got to be a clear line of responsibility. For IARU, there's a clear definition of what is a national society, and that's uh, recognised by the regulators and uh, by the ITU. You may well have to start mirroring that idea by some form of international AMSAT clearinghouse to say, uh, yes, we do recognise this group, but not the other one. You're going to have to put something in writing. The question, of course, is, is on what basis do you recognise? Well, you can define that. I'll take you back quite a large number of years, many years. There was a, a movement in MSET to, to, to rebrand MSET as MSET NA, and MSET would then become the international body, still maybe uh, run by MSET NA, as they said, and all the other MSET organizations would affiliate, but that didn't find too much favor with the board of MSET, and I can see many reasons why. And uh, you know, so the president at the time had to like, you know, just drop his ideas. Uh, so it, it didn't happen at that time. That would of course have been an easy way out. But then on the other hand, just can, can you really accept, uh, can you really expect the MSET in North America, or the MSET Corporation to, to be able to, uh, to take on their job? I don't think it's really, you know, their job to do that. Well, if you go back to history, I think what well, a certain uh, gentleman in ARRL did you know, 78 years ago when you realised that they needed to be an international radio unit. Yep. So we are no further than we were about 15 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there seems to be a consensus that maybe we ought to do is, again, go back to the existing AMSA organizations, have them be polled as to what their feelings are about using the National Amateur Radio Organization as the clearinghouse for their respective countries and then get some feedback from that. From an AMSAT NA perspective, we get requests all the time about we want to be recognized. We're starting a new group and we want to be recognized. And the most recent group that, was, that, that has come forward, at least to us, has been AMSAT Turkey. Now, the exchanges we had with AMSAT Turkey was they were going to follow the process that you basically just outlined. I mean, they were establishing themselves as an as a organization recognized by the laws of Turkey and then going to their national organization basically to get recognized by them and they've established themselves as you will as a viable organization. The problem you run into is when you end up with these competing groups within a single national or you know national country and they're asking us to pick one over the other. We're in, we're in no position to do that. No. And so the issue then is how do we, you know, be be consistent in our approach when these organization requests come forward that we can be consistent in how we apply um, the appropriate steps and advise them as to what they need to do to get themselves properly established. Yeah, no, I think so. Is everybody except uh, uh, happy with that <coughs> proposal from Barry? And we follow that process and then most probably by the time we meet next year in, in well, I, I won't be here, but I'll be in the US so we can perhaps take it forward. But we can take it forward by email in the next few months. Right. The Turkish one, yes, they have gone that process and they have 
actually uh, started asking questions now about coordinating frequencies and so on.